ask me what a builder's grade shower is. This is builder's grade. Typically it's a four by four. This is a six by six, but it's the cheapest tile that builders can get. And therefore by default, it's a builder's grade shower. Um, they, they are going to fail eventually from day one. Um, the only saving grace on this is that they used a fake pan and the reason oops the reason I don't like these fake pans is because they either crack and or um, they attract dirt that you can't get rid of and then on top of that they typically set their wallboard there's a lip on these pans same as there is a lip on a tub and then there's an edge and this is the edge and they set their wallboard on the edge and then they put their tile on so water gets up under there despite the caulking and it, it wicks up and it doesn't matter what the wallboard is it wicks up and then you get mold and mildew right there at the perimeter all the time and almost 100 percent sure that that's how this was built the tile should be on the edge the way it is now and the wallboard should be on the lip on the very top edge and it wouldn't do that but builders don't care because they're responsible for one year and this doesn't happen in a year. This happens over time. Got some mold and mildew going on there too. The same reason, water's getting into that crack and it's getting into the wallboard behind it and it's rearing its ugly head right there. And it's very typical. Um, I don't anticipate any enormous issues on this. I believe this is a slab. If, if it's not, then there's, there's a crawl space below it. And um, in which case, if there's any damage, I'll show you. But um, when people ask me about builder's grade, that's what this is. It's just a basic uh, run-of-the-mill setup that um, is going to fail. Usually, my experience, about 15 to 20 years is when this starts failing. If they had done this in a 4x4 tile, which is pretty typical, um, then, yeah, about 15 years. I've seen them last 20 uh, if you're on point with maintenance and stuff like that, they can go beyond 20. But, um, yeah, about 20 years is the average before I get called in. Um, the grout is mixed really thin when the builders come in because they're doing assembly line. And, um, everybody has their job and the grout guy comes in with a big giant bucket of, of watered down grout and he's sloshing it in there. And then the grout becomes weak because it's watered down. So it fails, and um, once it gets back there, you know, the clock is ticking. I have one video, the 100-year shower, where that lasted actually 35 years, but they mitigated some of these problems by painting the tile, and of course the paint will chip off over time. Um, so they can last, but they're not built to last. They're, they're built as great. And um, so I'm going to be renovating this and bumping it out this whole foot times almost three, so there'll be an extra three square feet of this going on and it's all, all going to be travertine which is a nice look um, so including this backsplash area tub deck uh, what's left of it uh, face of the tub new uh, tub fixture will go in new shower fixture and uh, it'll it'll look really sharp when it's done and it'll last much longer than this has I think this house is 15 years I believe it's 15 years old Interesting. I was trying to show you the damage they use the backer board, which is great, but backer board still wicks up water and it will still mold and mildew. And uh, there's a lot of caulking done. It was quite a bit of an effort to take off this uh, shower glass. Which is good. The homeowner was on point to make sure it was watertight. But the problem is, it made it a warm... Ooh, that's not even backer. Is that backer board? It made a warm, um, dry ant farm. These guys were smart. They didn't want to get flooded out. So all the caulking was a double-edged sword. You know, they kept water from uh, ruining their shower sort of, but um, they made it viable. This is an exterior wall, 
so they made it viable for these guys to get in. So I'm going to run into a whole mess of eggs and stuff and uh, disturb a hornet's nest, as it were. So I got to spray that down first before I continue. Interesting development. The top is backer board, cement backer board, which is cool, but the inside isn't. So that's why I said you had that mold and mildew building up there, which um, I already knew. The thing is, when you take out so many showers in so many years, it's the same thing, especially with builders, over and over. About to give them as props for making a knee wall. Water tight. Ooh, you left me some glue. <laughs> I've never even seen that weld on. Um, you see the same thing over and over, and that's what I'm getting at. All the mold and mildew is right there at the top, which always gets in when you have a shower head opposite a knee wall. It's always, always, always. But what I normally see is all this wood rot. I see these two by fours that look like they've been in a fire. And um, that's the extreme case. But either which way. Hi guys, sorry about that. Interrupting their Sunday. Um, People get on to me about using green board because this is what they're afraid of. They're afraid of mold and mildew and water saturation into gypsum, which is true. But Builder is never going to waterproof. Um, and it's not the material you use. Ultimately, it's how you use it. matters the most. Hi guys. See, that's so typical. Um, and again, it's not because of the green board, it's because they didn't put it together right. Um, so don't get focused on, this wouldn't happen with Durarock. Sure it would. I take out Durarock all the time. All the time with mold and mildew. This was sitting on the top, so it doesn't have too much, but water saturation already started to get in on this edge. And it would have beget mold and mildew. Right there is starting a little bit, some of the black mold. Um, hardy backer, same thing. when I post my opinion on videos and stuff like that um, people will make comments about using more expensive material Schluter or Curdy. If they had built it out of Schluter or Curdy it wouldn't have happened. If they had used Red Guard it wouldn't have happened is more to the point. So you don't have to use expensive materials you just need to follow the steps that it takes to mitigate water. If that's all you do, then you're good. But builders don't care. This won't fail in a year, as I said. It took a long time. Interesting. This bathroom is a uh, shower, as it were, is coming along um, just great. This is the wall that I put up. This has been five, five days. I was here yesterday doing the red guarding process. I don't really count that because it wasn't a day, but uh, five days to make all of this happen and have this shower um, ready to tile. Um, prep on a shower, or any tile job for that matter, is the most important part. There's nothing else more important than the prep. The tile can be a hodgepodge, it can not match, it can, you know, lines could be off, you could have lippage and all that stuff. But in the end, 
you know, that's just for looks. This is the functional part, and um, this is 100% waterproof. At this point, I'm starting the tiling process, so the niche will be tiled, and the floor will be tiled, and that will take me about three hours, roughly, maybe four. Once that's done, once this process is done, then there's nothing else I can do. I wait till the next day to grout. This, where my wallboard meets the old uh, wallboard at, in this case, sheetrock, um, you need to make sure, and you can you can tell where I feathered out. See, I feathered out and made sure that this is flat, that it's straight and flat, because all my tile is going to go on top of here, and it's very, very imperative that all this prep is done correctly. Um, what else can I tell you? So, this is a very large six-foot level. Um, I suggest if you're going to be doing tiling, I know there's some tile guys that are watching, um, if you're going to be tiling that you get at least one of these. I have probably three or four of these different brands. I, ha I have all kinds of levels, but this is very important because when you're measuring your wall, um, and you should be doing this as you're doing your prep, it should be flat to the wall all the way down. And so there should be no gap at all. And if there is a gap, you need to fill that in. It should also be level. And you're going to measure it in two or three different spots to double check yourself, but also because those spots can can vary. Um, so you see it's flat to the wall all the way down and that's why it's important to have as long a level as possible and it's also level. Um, that's the ideal situation. Uh, so it's flat to the wall all the way down and it's level. And that is not by accident. That's on purpose. Same as this wall. It's level and it's flat to the wall same one on this wall. This is a wall that I actually built. So again, level and flat all the way down. If you recall, this is a knee wall. It was actually about maybe two, two and a half feet tall, and I extended it up. So um, yeah, flat and level, and that's what you want. So uh, make sure that your prep is right. Make sure that your walls are flat, level as possible. Make sure that your everything's waterproofed. Um, what else? What else? What else? Uh, the tile I'm putting in here is this. It's actually a travertine, two by two travertine, and I'm going to dry fit. Um, so I'll dry fit and know exactly where all my sheets of my tile are going to go prior to me ever mixing up the thin set. Um, also, I will dry fit inside of there to make sure where my cuts are at because I'm symmetrical and if I have any small cuts, they're going to be either side over here. This is going to be staggered 18 by 18 tile, so I'm going to do full and a half, well, I'll probably do full in the middle, and then half and half or whatever the math happens to be. And then the excess of that, say this is an 8 inch piece, right, and I have an 18 inch tile, then a 10 inch would go here. And then if I have at the end of the wall a cut, then so, so be it. Um, because that's out of sight, out of mind. This is what I'm looking at the most. Um, so, that's where I'm at with this. Um, hopefully, some of what I told you has helped. There's really nothing else that, you know, that I can say about this with, um, with regard to prep. Um, you can go through my library. I have other videos that show how to prep a shower, how to build a curb, how to pour the pan, blah, 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 blah. But um, I just figured now it's been about five days, I haven't got the camera out. And this is something that, um, that you might want to know, or some of these things you might want to know, or maybe not, I don't know. So we built this wall, where the knee wall used to be, to get rid of the ants. I'm kidding. They wanted a um, double-sided tile wall, tile around uh, the backsplash area of the tub, tile on the face of the tub, and... Um, Man, I really love travertine. I can't emphasize that enough. I love, I love, love, love working with travertine. It's so easy to cut, so easy to work with. I don't do it a lot anymore, but um, of all the tile out there, this is my favorite to deal with. Uh, the floor is by two by two, as I always do with my drain. I taper the cuts uh, slightly above it. So that there's positive water flow, niche trimmed out with bullnose. There you go. Um, as you saw, I just basically did a new shower. Got out a couple of feet, 
and made it longer, tied it into this other tile. A lot of haze going on right now. And that is wrapped up. This is um, this is done. I am out of here and on to the next job. Once I get the shower valve discussion back on and the shower head, which I've saved, so I got to put that back. Um, and basically, the, yeah. Not much to say about this. wasn't really anything to show except for the ants, which was kind of weird, but um, it's done and over with. You know, moving on. Hey, if you enjoyed that video and you learned something, consider being a Patreon member. Five, ten, fifteen dollars a month would help me greatly produce more videos. I make nothing from YouTube at all. If you're gonna call me for advice, please donate fifty dollars for thirty minutes. My link to my PayPal and my Patreon account is down below. You can click on those, and if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell so you get immediate notifications as soon as I post videos. And thank you very much for your support.